Hello everyone again. This is Abacus and Chess learning program. This is Chess lesson 3. Chess lesson 3. So today we are going to learn all the chessmen or chess pieces as you can see them on the board. I'm going to explain to you about the, the chess pieces. By now you should be knowing how to name the board, the boxes, the center squares, and so on so that today we are going to learn about the movement some of the benefits that you are going to to acquire by learning chess include focusing you'll be able to uh, observe things carefully and also to concentrate you'll be able to increase your concentration we have visualization you'll be able to imagine a sequence of actions even before they happen these are some of the benefits for learning chess Thinking ahead, you'll be able to uh, think uh, items very fast and take action in good time. You are going also to be able to weigh options uh, in good time. If you continue learning chess like this, your mind is prompted and uh, you'll be able to see the pros and cons or the advantages and disadvantages of things and you'll be able to maneuver or get to know uh, what is best for you. You'll also be able to analyze uh, things concretely or be very deep when you're going to analyze something, not just the periphery or going through things uh, uh, very fast, but you'll be able to uh, get to the nitty gritties or the details of items. You'll also be able to think abstractly. Thinking abstractly is having a broader picture and considering several things at a go before you, you make a decision. We have planning. In chess, you normally will have to plan. So, it is this planning that will help you to develop uh, long-range goals and steps that you're supposed to take in order to achieve success in life. There are so many items uh, that chess comes along, including putting strategies and so on. Those are some of the benefits. But one-on-one -on -one to what we're supposed to do today, let's look at the chessmen so from my board you can see that i have a couple of pieces actually there are 16 white and uh, 16 black summing up to 32 pieces on the board remember rank one to four is white space of activity and four i mean five six seven and eight are black space of activity but of course you can intrude you're supposed to go forward until you dominate black or black should fight and dominate a white number one piece is the king is the king we have got two kings on the chessboard look at look at box e1 this is a king and this is how the king looks like they are they sit on the same file with the blacks king so you can see that we have two kings we only have two kings we shall talk about the king later and see the movements of the king and so on number two we have the queen the queen sits on d5 so we have the white king on d1 and we have the black queen on d8 only two kings are on the chessboard <clears throat> number three i have got rooks rooks for r double o k rooks uh, this is the symbol for rooks there are two of them sitting at the edges for white i have a rook on h8 and i have another rook on a1 i have the black rooks one on a8 and the other one on h8 so we have got four rooks on the chessboard but each party or each player has got only two rooks the next piece or the next member is a bishop 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 we have got two bishops each side so for white we have got two bishops one sitting on f1 and another one sitting on c1 f1 and c1 we also have two black bishops one on c8 
and another one on f8. That's all about the bishops. We have two other pairs or pieces or members. We call them knights. Knights for k n i g h t s. K n i g h t s. Knights. They are also called the horses because when you look at this knight, looks like a horse. Looks like a horse. It can jump. And basically that's what they do on the chessboard. So you have got two of them, one on B1 and another knight on G1. We have two knights for black, one on G8 and another one on C8. Those are the knights. And finally, we have got pounds. Pounds. P A W N. P A W N. If it is one, it's called a pound. If there are many, they are called pounds. Now, pounds are eight. Each member has got eight. So I have got eight pounds for the white uh, for the partner, and you have got uh, eight pounds on the blacks side that's all about the pounds so just quickly to highlight the same and to put emphasis about them if you look at the placement of the pounds the placement of the pounds you have got eight pounds taking the second rank of white eight pounds taking the second rank of white and you have got eight black pounds sitting on the seventh rank. This one you should always remember, sitting on the seventh rank for black. Now, each pound carries one mark, one point. Each pound carries one mark or one, yes, one mark or one point. So, you have got eight pounds. All your, all your pounds carry eight points. Later on, I will show you the movement. If you look at our rooks, we have got two rooks. One on h8, another one on a1. Two rooks. And also, they sit on uh, the boxes I've mentioned, h8 and a1. We also have two of them on the black side at the corners. Each of them carries five points. So... If you are white, you have got two rooks. Those are ten points. If your rook is attacked, ten points have gone. Ten points have gone. If both of them are attacked. But it happens one at a time. Not You can't play twice. You just play once and either attack or do something else. So each rook carries five points. Knights, as we have seen them, we have two knights each. Uh, they carry three points. They carry three points. Also for the black side. So each knight carries three points. Next are the bishops. Each bishop carries again three points. Carries again three points. Each bishop three points. Both of them six points. Also for black, for black three points each. We have the queen here on B file. The Queen here and also the queen here. The queen carries nine points. The queen carries nine good points. So if your queen is attacked, then nine points have gone. I come to the to this member called a king. A king is the father of the game. If the king is attacked, the game is over. The game is over. The king has no point. He carries zero points. Or say, he has no point. Because if the king is attacked, the game is over. If the king is attacked, the game is over. So that's all about the pieces and their points. Yes. So we are going to look about how chessmen move. We are going to see how chessmen move. The movement of a piece is called a move. In chess, we call a movement of a piece, a move. Now, if you realize uh, there are six kinds of chessmen or six types of uh, 
chess men that we have talked about that are different. So I have got pawn, rook, knight, bishop, king, and I mean queen and king. So we have pawn, rook, knight, bishop, queen, and king. I did not repeat the rest because they are a repetition of the six that I have already mentioned. Now it is also important for you to know that when you make a move, it is not permitted to move a piece to a square occupied by another piece. If a piece moves to uh, a square that is occupied by another piece, then he must be capturing you must be capturing that piece you must be attacking it otherwise we cannot have two pieces on the same box we cannot have two pieces on the same box take time to reflect about what we have talked we have, we have spoke about so that i'm going to introduce you to how the pieces are moved we are going to see how the pieces are moved so stay tuned make sure you do some exercises understanding how many points each party carry and in my next lesson i'll now be teaching you how to move all the pieces how to move all the pieces thank you